In this last triad exercise of the first section of the course, we're looking at just throwing one more uh, one more thing into the mix as far as adding to what our knowledge of simplifying radicals is. We're throwing in another variable as part of the product that's under the radical. The same principles that we've used up to this point apply. Uh, the, the, the same properties uh, are involved. We're just throwing one more variable into the mix. So again, if we're looking at a square root, which is what the first two parts of this problem are, we want to look for perfect squares. So we look for perfect squares of each part of the product, or each value that's part of the product that's under the radical. Uh, a squared and B squared, those are pretty simple. We already know that A squared equals A squared, B squared equals B squared. So if we really want to know what squared equals 100, we should know that 10 squared equals 100. So if we simplify this radical, we're going to end up with 10 squared, a squared and B squared. So this is 10 a B and it's all being squared. Now one of the issues with this is again even index there's this invisible 2 that's out here and an even power. So n equals 2 that means if it's even which in this case it is, we have to take the absolute value. So we'll throw in a step here that's a little unnecessary and keep the 10 inside. So this equals the absolute value of 10 a b. When we take the square root, 10 we know is positive. So this is just going to be 10 times the absolute value of a b. <clears throat> Part b is similar, only we're taking the variables to higher powers than two, so we need to figure out what power squared uh, we have. With 144, we should recognize 12 squared equals 144. With p to the 12th, we need to recognize that p to the sixth squared equals p to the 12th, and with q to the 20th, we need to recognize that q to the 10th squared equals q to the 20th. So let's rewrite what we have with our radical, the square root of 144p to the 12th q to the 20th. That is equivalent to 144. The, the square root of 144 is 12, so this is 12. The square root of p to the 12th is p to the 6th. This is p to the 6th. The square root of uh, q to the 20th is q to the 10th, so this is q to the 10th, and the entire thing is being squared. Again, even index, even power, so we have to take the absolute value. You don't need to throw the absolute value of the number, uh, the, the, the whole number in there, but I'm going to just so you can see what we're doing. So this equals the square root of 12 p to the 6 q to the 10th all being squared is the absolute value of 12 p to the 6th q to the 10th. The 12 comes out because we know it's positive so this is 12 times the absolute value of p to the 6th q to the 10th. But now wait a minute what we should recognize here is p to the 6th we know is going to be positive. q to the 10th, that's also going to be positive. So we have one more step, and we could have skipped these steps here if we simply recognize it. I just want you to see it. Since we know p to the 6th is positive, we don't need the absolute value, so this is 12 p to the 6th. q to the 10th we know is positive, so we don't need the absolute value. That's simply q to the 10th. And again, that's because their powers are even, we know they're going to be positive. <clears throat> Last but not least, the cube root of 8x to the 30th y to the 12th. Let's look for perfect cubes. We know that 2 cubed equals 8. We know that x to the 10th cubed equals x to the 30th. I'm going to draw a little line here so I keep it separate from the actual problem that we're looking at. And we know that y to the fourth cubed 
equals y to the 12th. So if we simplify this all into something that's being cubed, we know that, that what's under the radical being cubed is 2x to the 10th. that looks more like a zero, 2x to the 10th, y to the 4th, all being cubed. It's an odd index, odd power, so we don't need to take the absolute value. And we know that this equals 2x to the 10th, y to the 4th, and it's because if we cube that, we get what we originally had under the cube root under the cube root radical. I'm going to make that look a little neater so you can read it. Two, said that, then got another squiggly line. Two, third time's a charm. X to the tenth, Y to the fourth. So the square root of 100 A squared B squared, when we simplify it, then equals 10 times the absolute value of AB. We need that absolute value because it's an even index and the power on the variable itself when it's being squared is odd, A to the first, B to the first, so we need that absolute value. The square root of 144P to the 12th, Q to the 20th. We don't need the absolute value necessarily because when we square, what we're squaring in each instance, we already know is positive. 12 is positive, P to the 6th is positive, Q to the 10th is positive, but I went ahead and wrote out the absolute values as a matter of practice. It all comes out in the wash at the end to, with no absolute value, be 12, P to the 6th, Q to the 10th. And last but not least, the cube root of 8X to the 30th, Y to the 12th simplifies to 2X to the 10th, Y to the 4th. And again, it's a cube root, so no absolute value is needed.